everybody. It's been a while since we've been on the podcast of Sophie and Marco Dish on the Movies. And it's the beginning of summer. We've had all kinds of things happen. I actually wrote my notes for all this on the way to Kansas City to go to a funeral. In fact, we're recording this in Blue Springs, Missouri, which is on the eastern side of Kansas City. So guess what we're talking about today? A movie? No. We are talking about the Andy Griffith Show. Today we are going to rank the 10 best and 10 worst episodes of the Andy Griffith TV comedy family show, which ran for eight seasons from 1960 through 1968. In another segment, we will review the show itself, but today we're just doing rankings. And as a note, although Mayberry RFD, a spin-off show, continued the Mayberry story for another three seasons from 1968 through 1971, we are not including this show in our rankings. Okay? So each season of the Andy Griffith show ran an average of 30 to 32 episodes, which is way more than anybody gets today. And Marco and I each will have a different yeah, list. What, what do we get today? Like British shows only give you like two episodes, three episodes a year. And then American shows only give you like a... 10 to 13 like that's pretty abysmal oh and the reason why Marco is talking softly is because we're in a hotel room and he thinks that we're going to, to bother somebody so I don't think so but anyway Marco and I each have our own list they're not we're not just agreeing on one list per uh, one good list and one bad list he has one and I have one for each good yeah. and bad okay because we have our own individual taste so for me by what criteria did I choose an episode that I didn't like for example every time Andy demeaned Opie for no good reason in other words he just got after him and was uh, said he was gonna whip him and all this BS I, I just I didn't he did this it. constantly and he did it all the time and I don't, there never was a better pal, son, or kid than Opie for just about 99% of the time. He almost always never lied, and if he did, it was for a good reason, or he lost himself, meaning he was a kid, and if he was just perfect all the time, nobody would want to watch him, or they would think he was a goody-goody or whatever, but it wouldn't be a good thing, or would, and it wouldn't be realistic either. And it did happen a few times, so I'm not saying he's perfect, but he wasn't he wasn't as bad as, as Andy made him out to be all the time. All the time. Other episodes I hated were when Aunt B and Clara acted sanctimonious about their beliefs. Then there were certain episodes that reflected the way the very worst about living in a small town. Like gossiping or an acceptance of outsiders and suspicious of anything new. I lived in a small town in Missouri and experienced these most un unendearing qualities, so I surely didn't want to watch an episode about them. Okay, the episodes that I did like were about women who stood up for themselves or who stood up against what was wrong. Also, I liked it when everyone got together and shared a special day and watching the comedic Don Knotts, who was never afraid to look or act funny. Marco affirmed this by saying he received six Emmys when he was on the show and he was not on for all eight seasons. And he, it was. Yeah, he was. He, he was on every season? Yeah. But he wasn't a regular character for all eight seasons. No. So I think those Emmys that he received were very well received, because, well deserved, because they were good. When he was in it, 
it was really good. When he wasn't at... Uh, Another thing I liked is when the characters on the show were bowling or dancing because they seemed to be having fun. When actors look like they're having fun at what they're doing, I think the audience enjoys watching them more. So these are just some of the criteria I use to judge an episode and either place it in my top 10 best or top 10 worst. <clears throat> I guess I'll start with the episodes I didn't like. Number 10, and just the thing, do I, have I ever said before I don't like ranking anything? Well, I have, because this is hard for me, but maybe not so much with the bad episodes. Okay, number 10 is <laughs> called Ellie for Counsel. Episode 10. Fair Worst. Season 1. Fair Worst. Yes, these are my uh, 10 you, worst episodes. You, you lied because... You, you contradicted yourself. No, I just said, I don't, you said, I don't like ranking you said, anything. You said that for your best criteria, one of the things you look for is women standing up for themselves. And that's what this episode is supposedly well, about. Why don't you hear what I have to say? Okay. Okay, Ellie is the town pharmacist, which means she is a professional and earned a degree to get that pharmacy accreditation but when she decides to run for town council all the men have a fit including her boyfriend Andy saying that women shouldn't be in government no that's not true they don't say that they say that this other guy should be town council because he was actually town council before and so he he's automatically more qualified and better than her. Yes, but that but they don't even want to give her a chance. Yeah, because she's a pharmacist and well, so she's not what? experienced. Well, I, I just don't think that's fair. I she do. should have the right to run. Why does he have to be, why does he have to monopolize? She did have the right to run and all these people wanted to vote for her just to spite the men and they didn't even consider who was a better candidate. And I believe that at the end of the episode, she even concedes the vote to the other guy, so. Yes, but to me, it was about fairness. And I thought, and I thought Andy acted crappy to her. I, I didn't don't like agree. that. Well, like I said, this is why Marco and I have separate lists. But the issue got so heated, it blew up the town between men and women. This really rankled me, and I couldn't stand it. The men finally come around, but and Ellie does too, and it, it ends up in a positive note, which is a good thing. Okay, number nine is The Jinx. It's episode 17, season two. This is an example of small town bad behavior, which I hate. Everyone thinks this man is a jinx and they don't believe he can do anything right. They are afraid he will infect those around him with his jinx curse. After a few people realize they are being unfair, they finally come around and everything works out. And this was a guy who was born and raised in Mayberry. That was what really blew my mind. He wasn't even a stranger. Okay, number eight is well, a- for for number nine, the reason why I don't have that on my list mm -hmm. is because I think that <clears throat> there are some funny moments in it, like Barney doing those weird magic spells to try to ward off the jinx and <laughs> touching Opie's hair. That, that's, that stuff's funny. You have to take that into account. I are there funny it. moments? I just think of the I think of the badness when people get together. And there is they, a lot of negativity. And I don't though. like it. And I've seen it in real life, and I don't like it. And so I don't want to see it on TV. That's not what you want when you watch the Andy Griffith show. You don't, no, you you don't. don't want negativity. Well, you don't want that much negativity. Okay, number eight is called A Medal for Opie. Oh, God. Episode 19, Season 2. This is one of the episodes where Opie acts badly, but it was short-lived because he acknowledged the fact that he wasn't as good in track 
as the person who won. He acted like a brat in this episode, and what just a little bit about what it, the move the, the episode was about was that uh, Opie was going to be in this race. I don't know if it's a fifty-yard dash, but it was something like that. And for some reason, uh, Barney and I guess several other people just thought he had it in the bag and he was going to be an instant winner and Barney trained him. He acted like he was trainer. And I mean, you, you don't train for a race in a couple of days. You yeah. take weeks or months to to try to do, you know, as good as you can. It's and not, it, doesn't was take his, a couple. it was his first the try. It was, and he never acted like this. So when he lost very badly too, because he was not really the best person. He was not well trained because he did not train for months on end. He trained for a couple of days. And he's tiny. He acted terrible. And I didn't like that from Opie because it was antithetical to his whole behavior, in which he's a very easygoing, fair person who would never act like it. So I hated this episode. I probably should have put it. Is num almost at number one because I really didn't like that one. I hated it when Opie acted badly. Again, so. there's funny moments in it. Barney yes. training Opie. There's always and, and Barney doing the leg presses. Just about in every episode Barney was in. I'm not gonna say every single one, but just about all of them. He was funny, but that part about Opie disturbed me <laughs> so much that I, this is in one of my worst is in my worst list. Okay, number seven is Andy and Opie are housekeepers. Episode 23, season one. Now, this may be kind of confusing, so I hope that I get it straight for you all. Okay, well, for the most part, Aunt B was my least favorite actor in this show. Even when I was a little kid, which is when this show was on originally, I thought she was too conservative and old fashioned. In this episode, she leaves town to visit a relative, and Andy and Opie are left to their devices. They become slobs. But then, knowing Aunt B is almost home, they clean everything up really nice, perfectly. But when they sit down after cleaning everything, Andy worries that she's going to feel like she's not needed because they were so good at taking care of themselves and they think she's going to have a fit. So they mess it up again on purpose. So they leave to go pick up Aunt B. And while they're gone, Clara, the other actress that drives me crazy, stops by and she sees the mess and she has a fit and thinks, oh my God, Aunt B's going to come home to this messy house. And she cleans it up. Then they all get back and Clara's long gone. And Aunt B sees or discovers that everything's perfect and, and it just, it happens exactly as Andy predicted. Aunt B has a fit that it's clean, that the house is clean, that there's ever the dishes are clean, that there's nothing on the floor, doesn't the chairs. She, doesn't she start crying? She starts crying and it just, ugh, it made me mad. I mean, that is all she has to do, though. And, and, he, and, and Andy and Opie are like, oh, what happened? How did this get cleaned up? They have no idea because they left it in a mess. And I just couldn't stand that crying and stupidity by her. It made me want to vomit. Okay, number six is A Stranger in Town. It's episode 12, season one. Now, you can guess from when I talked about the jinx. This is another episode about small town bad behavior. Ed Sawyer is a man who comes to town and he knows everybody and their business. He knows everybody by their names, their children, their parents, everything. There's one problem. Nobody knows him. And I mean nobody. Apparently, he was in the military with a Mayberry man who took the Mayberry paper. Ed 
Sawyer was so enamored with what he heard and read about Mayberry, he decided he wanted to live there. But since nobody knows him, they think he's a spy and are mean and hateful and suspicious of him. Believe it or not, it all works out, but I could not stand the people's behavior. It was only after Andy, just Andy, boldly stands up for Ed and helps explain the situation, does everyone begin to chill out. I like the episode. I think it's funny. I hate it. Especially when Barney goes up to him and, and tries to speak a, a foreign language to him because he thinks he might be a spy. So he's like, Speck and Deutsch. And the guy's like, what? And like, even if he was a spy, what would he be spying on them for? What would he hope to learn? Not a, you that's, know, what that's thing? That's just the, out, the outrageousness of it. Yeah, that's why I don't like it. I, okay. I don't like a lot of the episodes in season one, but again, there's funny stuff in them. <clears throat> okay, number five is Opie's Charity. Season one, episode eight. Oh, I heavily disagree. With Here's another one. one I don't like. But because Andy gets after Opie big time. I consider putting that one in my top ten best. Because he gives so little money to charity. But instead, he wants to spend most of it on his girlfriend. I hated this because Andy did not listen or pay attention to Opie. Instead of trusting him, his son or giving him the benefit of the doubt, he acted horribly to him. And you know what? Do you know why the reason why Opie wanted to save his money? So the little girl who didn't have a coat, so he could buy her a coat. That was what happened. And when Aunt found out, he had egg on his face. So, okay. Well, here, here's the thing about that episode. There's a whole other subplot in the episode about that, that girl that girl, she has a, an alcoholic husband who comes back from the dead. And I didn't really like that part, but I, I really like the stuff about Opie um, giving money to his girlfriend to get a coat. Yeah, that's the good thing about it. you didn't know. But he's not the adult. He's the child. I just, I mean, Andy does that every single time. And I don't like that because... His son... He treats his son like garbage. It, well, it's not real overt. It's more... Uh, it's it's not so obvious. It's, it's not blatant like he's being abusive. But it's just like he can't... It's like he doesn't trust him. And it just yeah. drives me nuts. Okay, number four is the sermon for today. Oh. This is season four, episode four. And again, this is another one of those a little bit confusing, but I'll try to s explain it. Okay, a guest preacher from out east stops by to preach. He talks about people in Mayberry who need to stop and think about their lives and reflect about their lives and are, is it, are they too hectic? And maybe they should slow down and appreciate life. <laughs> My God, fast and hectic is not how anyone in their right mind would describe Mayberry. Mayberry. So this is the most asinine episode ever. Life in a small town is not fast and hectic. It's boring and slow. In fact, this episode contradicts one of the most iconic episodes for the entire show, which is called Man in a Hurry, where there's a businessman that comes into town. He needs <coughs> his car to be fixed, and he can't get it fixed because it's Sunday, and, and they refuse to fix it. And that proves how, how slow and just in another world that the town is. And you have this preacher come into town. He's from a, probably and, a fast place. And just Town, just city. because just because he's religious <coughs> means you have to listen to every word he says. Yes, and, and every that's word he says thing. is true. 
that's another thing in itself, but I didn't want to offend anybody. But he didn't, he just didn't know. He didn't think about that people who live in a city or out, let's say out east, and I know, I live in Ohio, pace of life can be a lot faster, the time changes a lot faster, you're an hour ahead, and you go to bed later, you get up earlier, and then you go out west. I know what it's like. Missouri, for example, is a lot more slow paced and a lot more easy going, but he just had no appreciation of the difference. In, in fact, he doesn't even learn at no, the he end never either. Does. So there's the episode. It, ugh. God, it's terrible. So what happens? Horrible. So do the the residents decide to relax anymore? They've been relaxing already. Yeah, just sitting around staring into space. <coughs> no. Isn't relaxing enough. They turned it up ten notches. Yeah. They decide to have a concert in the middle of town. And they have a gazebo. And I think the band sits in the gazebo and they play. Well, the gazebo's rotten. They have to... And somebody, uh, some men, have to try to completely rebuild it. It's also tiny. And then the uniforms for the band are horribly tattered and filthy. And Aunt B and Clara have to redo the uniforms. And this is all in one day. They want to have the concert that night. This is the night of, this is Sunday night, where the preacher has just told them to relax and enjoy their life instead they're stressing themselves out by having this concert. And then the band hasn't practiced together in a million years. And so they want them to be in a gazebo that's not even put together in uniforms that are a mess, playing together. And when what, they, what songs are they gonna play? Yeah, that's right. Religious songs. So to me, this episode was dumb, dumb, dumb. All right. Next is number three. We're almost done, for me anyway. Yeah. Andy and Opie's Pal, which I believe is season four, episode 14. Since Opie was such a good-natured, likable kid, and this is the one after that race I talked about, it's worse. It always bothered me to see him act mean and selfish. It seemed antithetical to his being. In this episode, Opie gets jealous when his dad shows too much attention to his friend. He practically turns green with envy because he's so jealous. And if you were watching, you would think, if you weren't thinking about it too carefully, that you were watching The Twilight Zone. This is just how weird Opie got. No, I think you're you're confusing this episode with the one with with the uh, girl. With I know, Peggy. but he was he was also unbelievably jealous and mean and horrible to still, this other boy. Still, there's funny moments. No, I don't. I didn't like it. Okay, next I have two more. Number two, the horse trader, season one, episode fourteen. Seems like a lot of these episodes I don't like have the number four in them. I don't know what that means. This is another episode where Andy rags on Opie for trading something of lesser worth for something more valuable for himself. Like maybe he's cheating another kid. But then Andy turns around and tries to sell a white elephant cannon by making up a fake story to make it look, make it seem more valuable than it really is. Oh. Bad parenting, stupid episode. Uh, but then at the end, the guy who's buying it doesn't even care, and he's like, he's going oh, to say something about it. I love what you did there because you know I can sell it now. And you made up a great story. But the thing is, that may be true. But the fact that he was ragging on Opie for doing something similar, but then it was okay for him to do it. That's what I didn't like. Okay, the last one, the worst one for me anyway, is Wedding Bells for Aunt B. Okay, my list is completely different than hers. Season two, episode, uh-oh. Okay, I don't know, because I have episode 
Oh yeah, that's right. So episode 26. When I say these episode numbers, it kind of I always have to look twice because there's no such thing these days on episodes. Oh my. Okay. Clara's son got married. But Clara is still a widow and she felt awkward at the marriage ceremony. So she decides to put an ugly thought into Aunt B's head that she is holding Andy back by not having a husband of her own. Therefore, Aunt B, who's been dating this guy, she, and you can tell they're not meant for each other, just friends, but she tries to make Andy believe they are madly in love. This is, and that maybe they're gonna get married sometime, even though she cringes at the thought. This is another example of Aunt B and Clara being stupid. And there's another episode like this called Aunt Bee's Invisible Bow, Season 5, Episode 27, where Clara tells her she is holding Andy back. So Aunt Bee says she is having a relationship with the Eggman. Clara has no life whatsoever, by the way. Right. And, the, and by Eggman, I mean the man who, who delivers eggs to their house. In those days... And even I remember this in the suburbs, they delivered milk to your house and to in Mayberry they were delivering milk, cheese, and eggs. So just to let you know. And so she was saying this because she wanted to encourage Andy to move on with his personal life. The problem that she didn't think about or realize, the egg man was already married. He actually had grown children. And I guess she didn't know it. And in this in this day and age, if you were going out with a married man and, and, and people knew about it, that would be like a big scandal, especially in a small town. So to me, that was the most, if that was stupid and the other one was stupid. And that's what I didn't like with Aunt B and Clara. Okay. You haven't, you haven't convinced me. I don't care. It's Marco's turn now. Okay. I almost put a sermon for today in this list, but I couldn't because Barney's in it at least. <laughs> and I think it's funny how how stupid everybody in the town is that they're they're going reverse and just ugh. at number ten I have season seven. I think the last episode or so for season seven, Obi's most unforgettable character. <clears throat> Do you remember this one? Opie is supposed to write about oh. the most unforgettable character in Mayberry. And I didn't like this episode as soon as Opie muttered these words. But how am I going to write a paper? Everybody, There's nobody in Mayberry that's memorable. Ugh. And that's like, that's blasphemy. Yeah. I mean, you could have done an episode where he... He went and interviewed Ernest, Ernest T. Bass. You could have had o o Otis. Otis. You could have had him interview a Rafe Hollister. Uh, how about those those hillbilly people? How that about sang? How about Gomer? I mean Gomer. He's in the military. He's not memorable. He's overseas uh, fighting, and he's not memorable. So. And, and they're just saying that. They're just making his character say that for the point of the episode. So he's I, I think the problem, just let me interject, the problem might have been the assignment itself. If they just would have put a character in Mayberry or somebody who has an impact or something like that, I, I don't know, but just the way the wording was, it might have uh, confused him. Okay, go ahead. So he chooses Andy, and he can't write about him at all. And so then he ends up writing about his friend's dad, and his friend writes about Andy. And the explanation is that you can't write stuff about your dad because it'll end up sounding mushy. You have to write stuff about someone else. Which is stupid. Stupid. Uh, unless you're writing something that's a criminal investigative report or something maybe or a medical report 
you know, that's where conflicts come in. But yeah. this is just a little paper about somebody who's meaningful. In other words, they what they do and why do you complain about it? You didn't even put it on your list. No, because there's probably so many that. Like number, I said, the lists are different. Number nine, I have the return of Malcolm Merriweather. And <coughs> this episode's very negative because personally, I feel like Malcolm Merriweather should have replaced Aunt B and that he should have been Andy and Opie's butler. And I mean, because he's really cool all throughout the episode. But you have the bitch Aunt B in the background and she I mean she makes faces, she complains, she cries treats Malcolm like crap. She I mean she's horrible. And this is probably one of her worst, if not her worst episode. Because she's just a a bitch. <coughs> and and Malcolm's doing nothing wrong. He's giving her a vacation. A vacation from constantly working. And not only that, he's he's making her food and and giving her everything that she could ask for, and she's just ugh. Yeah, and 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 she, he was never going to be staying. He was just yeah, passing he, through. He was paying off a debt, right? He was just trying to make money for like a week. Right, and then he was going to go on his way. He wasn't planning on staying there. So well, she had nothing to be worried about. Yeah. Yeah. Horrible. Yeah. Horrible behavior. Number eight, I have Opie's piano lessons. Now in this episode, Opie signs up for piano lessons with Clara. And at the same time, a star from football comes over to teach football lessons. And the problem is, is that his dad says that he can only do one thing. And you can't have more than one interest you can't do more than one thing at a time, or else you're not giving it 100%. So basically, you can play video games and be good at them, and then go and play the guitar and be good at it, because you wouldn't be putting your 100% into it. And if these people back then knew what kids do today, yeah. they would freak out. And by the way, this football player was a, I, I'm not sure, it might have been Gail Sayers, but I wasn't, uh, back then I wasn't really a fan of football, but it's a very famous football player as a guest on the show, and he was playing this part. He did a good job. And, and, and Cl you have Clara, who says that <laughs> you gotta stretch out your, your fingers, which does nothing. She says you have to practice an hour every single day, or else you're gonna die. Oh, I think she was saying you had to practice two hours, two hours a day, yeah. well, which is just ridiculous. Yeah, there's one hour with her, and then there's one hour by himself. Yeah, and, you know, when you start putting, and especially with somebody just learning and it's a kid, you don't do that because mm -hmm. you're going to make them hate what they're doing right and he, away. And he's not even practicing, like, no, different really. stuff. He's just practicing the same thing. And that's bad, too, because you get bored. Over. I, I I learned how to do play an instrument when I was a kid, a couple of them, and I know exactly what she was doing wrong about the teaching. It was just terrible. So, the whole thing. Ugh. Very negative. Horrible. But at least the the football player comes over, and and football tell, player coach. He was and and he em, he embarrasses the the shit out of Andy. I mean, he really does. Because he, he proves you can do more than one thing at a time. And he and he's older than Opie, so he he had a father that was probably even more old old fashioned than Andy. And so how could he have been able to do two things at once? He must have not had a father that was as shitty as Andy. Well what Marco's trying to say is he comes to the house and wants to know what's going on and why Opie left the practice and couldn't yeah. play and and then he they talk about what the piano and he's supposed to be practicing and the football player co goes up to the piano and plays this beautiful piece of music with no music by memory 
and he shows trying to show them that they're wrong what Marco just said and, and at least the message of the episode is good but the, uh, the episode is negative you don't yeah. want to watch this episode over and over again no. number seven I have rich excuse me I have rich girl and Andy this is I think Peggy's last episode where she re reveals or word gets around finally that she's a part of a wealthy family and so immediately after that Andy has a disgusting reaction which is that poor people cannot be with rich people yeah. and that's what you call classism and <coughs> and so I mean Barney's Barney's saying that he can't be with her and then they go to a restaurant and he he acts like he can't be with her because he he can't read menu items or something and just ugh. just another negative episode yeah and considering today it's forgettable too you just have this Meghan Markle who was an actress and she came from a, a poor area in California and she marries a prince nobody gives a Nobody well, gives nobody gives an F about that B I T C H. Excuse me. Why do and you now we have number six, Bargain Day. This is another uh, negative episode, but mostly it's in the tone of uh, a sermon for today, where everything is stress, stress, stress. Aunt B decides to buy an entire side of beef, and the beef is tough and gross. And she puts it in a freezer that doesn't even work. And she refuses to get the freezer fixed because she's just too lazy to call. So she goes through all this trouble, all this uh, stress. Uh, she even makes a racist comment. Opie comes outside with a shirt off and he's like, it's really hot out. I shouldn't have to wear a shirt. And Aunt B says, uh, put on a shirt, you look like a savage. And that's just not acceptable. So, and then the way the episode turns out, Andy buys a new freezer for this horrible meat that, I mean, who would want to eat that? And uh, it's just a very negative episode. Number five, we have Mayberry RFD. This is the series finale of Andy Griffith. Does it have Barney in it? No. Does it have Opie in it? No. In fact, I don't even think it has uh, Howard in it. It might not have Howard in it. All it has, basically, is Andy, Sam, and Sam is a weak little pushover weasel, and... Uh, this weird Italian family, very, very stereotypical, and they never appear again, by the way, on the show, so they're a complete waste, and it's just, ugh. it's just the Italian family getting to know the town, it's very boring, and very, it's just, this is the series finale of the Andy Griffith show? I don't think so. I'm very surprised that Safi did not have Mayberry RFD on there because it's an extremely horrible ending to the show. Now number four, we have the canon. And the canon is one of those episodes that's just a drag to watch. You don't want to watch it. It's all about they have this antique cannon and they want to use it for like a, a centennial celebration. And then there are these random criminals that come into town and just the whole episode is very boring, very bland, like a lot of the episodes from the colored seasons. So number three, we have bringing up Opie. And now this episode, and now, 
Bringing Up Obi is a horrible episode. It's one of the season one episodes. And it's all about Aunt B sees that Obi got in trouble for playing cops and robbers. And, and, and basically the problem was is that Barney gave Obi a pair of handcuffs, which was a mistake. And so Aunt B takes Opie away from the jail to uh, hear stories from his father and forces him to sit around at home with nothing to do and uh, plant spinach and she treats him horribly. And just the whole episode is very negative once again and you, you really don't want to watch it because the way, and I don't understand why Aunt B is allowed to have the final say in what's good for Opie because she's not his mother, she's paid to be there, and he is his father. So number two, I have Opie Flunk's Arithmetic. Opie Flunk's Arithmetic is another negative episode. This is Barney's last episode in the black and white seasons. And it's also the episode in which I think Andy becomes an old, an old geezer. In this episode, Opie gets a bad grade in arithmetic. The result, Andy has an overreaction and says that because he got a bad grade in arithmetic in elementary school, that he's not going to be able to get into college. Now, if you think about that first second or two, that's extremely absurd. Him getting elementary school grades has nothing to do with college. And so the whole episode is people forcing him to study and just treating him like garbage. And then at the end of the episode, Finally, Andy lets him uh, play football or baseball or whatever because you have to have balance or else nothing's going to work. So, Opie Flunk's Arithmetic and also with that episode, uh, Barney acts negative too. He, he says that Opie is going to have to go to a trade school and so he tries to give Opie a, an aptitude test. And, and I think he like he keeps telling Andy and pressuring Andy about the whole grade situation. It's just a horrible episode. Number one, I have The Return of Barney Fife. This episode in season six is the worst and I refuse to watch it actually. Barney comes back into town for a reunion, a high school reunion. And at the high school reunion, he's really excited for Velma Lou to come back to town. And when she does come back to town, he discovers that she married a random doctor uh, after she moved out of town. So the whole episode is just negative. And then at the end he meets this random at the end he meets this random girl who who says she's madly in love with him since high school. And it's just it's a cop out. After all that negative behavior, I mean Velma Lou. So you're telling me that's all she wanted? She moved out of town to marry a random guy? and then comes back to rub it in Barney's face. I mean, it's just, it's disgusting. I, I would give Return of Barney Fife a zero out of 10 because there's nothing about the episode that's any good. The highest grade I would give on this list would be Opie's most unforgettable character. I would give that episode a four out of 10. And there are other episodes on the show that are like 5s out of 10s and 4s out of 10s. They just didn't make it on this list. And those episodes were very lucky 
because I'm very uh, critical when it comes to Andy Griffith episodes. So now we're going to do our best episodes after a short break. 